As we continue our discussion on meiosis, in this next flowchart, we're going to be looking at the human life cycle. And this is specifically going to be done so that we understand where meiosis plays its role in the cycle of human life. And we're going to begin where we all started off at this combination of sperm and egg. So what we have to begin with in this life cycle is the combination of sperm, which is N, which stands for what? Of course, it stands for haploid, combining with egg, and egg is also going to be N, it's going to be haploid. And when these two combine, we're going to undergo a process known as what? It's going, we're going to undergo a process known as fertilization. Once we have fertilization, we're going to then create what? Sperm and egg create or combine to form a diploid zygote. So we'll write zygote and we'll write 2n right next to it just so that we have a key um, understanding of ploidy. The zygote is considered the fertilized egg. And when we have a fertilized egg, we have the combination of sperm and egg giving us a diploid zygote. And that zygote will eventually turn into, um, a, through a bunch of mitotic divisions, so uh, through the process of mitosis specifically, that zygote will eventually turn into the multicellular organism that is you. Multicellular organism. So you start off as just sperm and egg. Those two will combine together under the process of fertilization to give a diploid zygote, which is a fertilized egg. And that fertilized egg, that zygote, will undergo mitosis many, many, many times over to finally form the advanced and beautiful multicellular organism that is a human. That's when we've created a human completely, that's a multicellular organism. But now this is a life cycle, so we have to somehow cycle back to the sperm and egg. And that's what we'll do utilizing meiosis. This human has to now produce gametes. So the human itself produces gametes. And when the human produces gametes, those gametes are at what? They are at a haploid level. And this is exactly what happens. That human will go back to producing the gametes, if it's a male, producing sperm gametes, and if it's a female, producing those egg gametes, that will then combine uh, once more to continue this life cycle. This human, of course, has to find a mate that is of the opposite sex so that the combination can happen and so that the cycle can happen again. But we are remember, we have to remember that we're talking about meiosis and where does meiosis play its role? We see mitosis playing a role in this middle section right here, going from zygote to multicellular organism. But where does meiosis play its role? Meiosis plays its role through this arrow right here, this multicellular organism producing gametes. Over here we can just write down through the process of meiosis. And more specifically, what I want to write down is that the production of gametes um, happens, uh, it's the only time, it's the only cells, these gametes are the only cells in human not produced via mitosis, via mitosis. They're the only cells, the gametes, the sperm and the egg are the only cells in the human body not produced via mitosis. Then, of course, what are they produced by? They're produced by meiosis. And specifically, these gametes, we can say that they develop um, from germ cells. Germ cells is just another way of saying very early cells, very early cells that are specific to the ovaries and also specific to the testes. Both of these are found, or one, one is found in females, which is the ovaries, and the other is found in the male counterpart, which are the testes. This is where all of this is happening, where the meiosis is happening, where the production of gametes is happening. And this is all developing from a germ line of cells. And this is occurring at the ovaries and the testes. And then, of course, I want to finish off this video by saying that these gametes that are produced are definitely meiotically derived. They are not mitotically derived. 
And what I mean by meiotically derived, I mean that they underwent meiosis in order to form into sperm and egg. And because they underwent meiosis, they then underwent this idea uh, of preventing, this meiotic, meiotically dividing prevents um, that doubling concept that we mentioned very briefly in a previous video, doubling of chromo number, let's say. And just to reiterate, remember, we have 46 chromosomes, but we also have 23 pairs. And within those 23 pairs, we have um, one pair from mom and one pair from dad. Those combine to give us the 46 chromosomes. But these are only specific to which type of cells. Only the somatic cells undergo this sort of uh, relationship. But then what do these gam gametic cells, these gametes, what do they undergo? They only have 23 chromosomes, and they only have, there's only one pair of them, and that's going to be specific to just the individual themselves. And that one pair will either be um, in the form of a sperm or an egg. And that's only going to be at the individual level, not coming from mom, not coming from dad, but it's only sperm or egg specific to the individual. So we'll say specific to individual, derived from the individual. How do we get this derivation of 23 chromosomes and not 46? We undergo meiosis. And meiosis is going to prevent the doubling of the chromosome number in the sense that we don't have our chromosome number of 46 at the ga gamete level because what would happen is if these gametes also had 46 chromosomes, that would mean you would have a 46 chromosome sperm combining with a 46 chromosome egg to give you how many chromosomes? 92 chromosome gamete. That doesn't make sense. That's not the right way to do it. So what do you have to do? You have to somehow get this to go to 23 and get that to go to 23 from mom and dad. The sperm has to get to 23. The egg has to get to 23. Then combine together to give you that good number of 46. 46 right there. And that 46 will give us that diploid 2N zygote. But we have to get to this N level of 23. And N level of 23, how do we do this N level um, derivation? we use meiosis. Meiosis is the way to produce gametes at the N level, at the haploid level. Haploid, I consider it sort of like half ploidy instead of diploid or di, meaning double ploidy. I don't consider it that. I consider it half, haploid, and that's what we do through meiosis. We'll continue our discussion on life cycles by looking at the life cycles of some other um, organisms that are not humans, just so that we can, again, establish the difference between mitosis-derived cells and meiotically-derived cells.